So welcome back to this brief tutorial. It's Ivan here and uh, today I want to show you a very amazing system against the Karakan. The Karakan is a system that arises from the move e4 and and black plays the move c6. Black plays c6 uh, in a very subtle way to take the center and we shall go with the standard move taking up the center with uh, the move d4 and then usually black strikes back with the move d5 fighting back for the center. Right now, we are going to play a very uh, nice move, which is silent, but uh, as well as dangerous. So that is the move F3. It's, uh, this is the fantasy variation, and uh, uh, it's also known as the Marokzi variation in the Karakan defense, against the Karakan defense. And let's see how what comes up with this uh, beautiful system. So let's continue to this uh, position. And... It's important to note that they usually take, and when they take, we take back with our pawn. Uh, when, the, when we take back with our pawn, it's important to note that one of the first common moves which comes up uh, in such systems, which is uh, not as accurate, is, uh, is the move knight to f6. Of course, let's kick away that knight, and this knight usually runs, uh, to, to, usually runs to this position, knight to d5, and then we can push around this knight which reminds us of the four knights attack the pawn, the pawn attack against the alekine defense when the knight runs around the center of the board so the knight retreats but this is an interesting position for white as the development is very uh, clean and all the pieces come out and with this position we can now be confident that white enjoys the center advantage and all the pieces come out pretty pretty strongly so take note that knight to f6 is not very accurate in such a such a position so let's see another position that arises which is the move pawn to e5 this is a very standard system against the against our marok z variation they try to fight back and undermine the center try to crush the center by themselves of course when we take they really also uh, just enjoy this exchange and we don't seem to have any advantage from such a position. So we don't expect uh, to take this pawn in, in, uh, in the center. We always have to bring out our knight and uh, we always have to bring out our knight and this helps us um, develop our pieces, as you can see, bring out our, bring up their bishop to pin our, our knight and we just have to focus on developing our pieces to castle and and of course uh, look at all these beautiful now the important thing to note is that knight to f6 is a blunder when we have to just continue with our plans and of course as you can see that this is a very beautiful setup when white enjoys this attack and then you can take this bishop you've just won a pawn for yourself and everything is pretty standard so what happens if they don't bring out that dubious knight to they usually take which is a co which is a standard line and indeed a main line we take back our pawn and now they are free to bring bring out the knight of course we can take but they have this uh, uh nice strike but this may not fully of course we cover out with the knight uh developing our pieces with tempo when they take and then we can attack this queen when this queen takes, uh, we can push on and still strike in the center. When they take, we just enjoy this king side. And this move then comes in this knight, which just spoils their party. And we really have this nice game at this, po at this moment. So, what happens? As we've seen these two variations, we've seen the knight coming out, we've seen them taking. Which other good move can they play? The standard move and the main line is them to bring this... Uh, standard knight to d7 this knight to d7 is a very uh strong move uh, for black because um it's it stops any attacks in the center remember they've pinned our knight and uh they've pinned our knight and then they have this and as they prepare to bring out another knight so when we castle now they are free to bring out their knight and when we we have to really always remember that our center has to be held with this move, held with this move, knight c3. 
uh, not nine to see through, but they move see through with the pawn. As we have this, uh, we have now this center quite solid. When they take, we shall use the pawn. So some of them have this dubious, uh, not dubious, but interesting move, trying to fight back with the queen side, but we can just fall back. And then when they come out to also want to castle, as they want to castle, we, we can see that they castle and we have all these ideas as we bring out our second knight to, to D2. So we have this uh, good system, which also is playable for black and white with all these, uh, with all these ideas, uh, bring, out, bring our queen to the king side and as the arrows here show. So we have developed, this is an objective, objectively equal position uh there's no reason for for us playing any other lines than these beautiful lines anyway so let's see what happens uh in some other systems so we come back to the main position as we've seen the knight the main line which they which they just come up with please note that we always have a pawn on c3 and then we can have our pieces well placed so when they bring out their bishop, please note that we have to also use that advantage to pin them. Uh, most, most, most of these games in this position, they usually castle, but what if they uh, try, as our bishop provokes this move, provoking h6, we just fall back, provoking them to weaken their king side, and then we can fall back. That was the reason for bishop to g5. So we can enjoy this, uh, we can enjoy this position as we as we see that everything is pretty fine for for white so this is another system we expect them to bring out their pieces we are just playing out an equal position which is standard so this is more of equal and um even though the computer says that uh, black seems to have a fair advantage but this advantage is very uh, negligible so let's see Let's let's continue playing this line and it's an interesting line against the Karakan. Okay, so what happens if uh, back to the main position here with the, with their bishop on d6, they have just developed their knights. Uh, well, then we have this pin. Of course, we expect them to castle, which is the standard line, and then we can bring our knight to d2. When we bring our knight to d2, we expect them to play all these moves as they bring their queen. Remember the the, the questionable uh, pawn to b5 uh they can also you can also provoke the h6 move as expected and uh, when they bring a, when they bring their queen this is more of a standard position and this is the common line that uh of course remember all the ideas we discussed earlier uh queen to e1 queen to h4 we all want to just maintain this solid structure with a with a beautiful center so uh, as we conclude we can see this other uh, line of course, we expect them to play e5, which is the standard system against our our line here. And when they take, we can have now the Maroc Z gambit. This Maroc Z gambit is an interesting variation here. We seem to give up a pawn for quick development, for quick development of the of the bishop. So we have our bishop on c4, and when they challenge our bishop, we can just take and dismantle the the king side. When we castle, we have these plans of uh, throwing a knight to g5 and, of course, our queen eyeing h5. And these are standard systems. So when that knight comes out, please feel free to kick out that knight. Uh, remember, that knight can fall into e4. And we have this still beautiful system. The knight retreats, but now we have opened up the queen to attack the king on h5. So please remember this system and this variation, but most of them will go for this uh, knight to d5. Uh, of course, we have very few of them who will go for this knight to g, knight to g, um, knight to g4. Those who go with knight to g4, um, just feel free to still uh, uh, kick around that, kick around that knight, or oh, please uh, continue with freely with that knight to g5 as you eye this. Uh, of course, we expect them to play this uh, dubious knight to d5 where we still control, we still strike with our knight to g5 with all these uh, strong attacks, uh, sorry, 
with all these strong attacks from the king side it's pretty pretty unstoppable so lastly let's see this game against the let's see this game which they which are uh, which we have uh, mvl a grandmaster a top grandmaster and against uh alexenko alexenko uh this must be from russia uh mvl is from uh, france a known french gm so this guy plays this system and this was a real serious game here and everything moved according to plan remember what we say they take and you take back the center and then this alex alexenko strikes the center everything remember don't take just bring out as this grandmaster did as they pin him just continue the reinforcement of the center since the knight is pinned uh, when this knight now comes out uh, remember the development stick to the development the queen so everything moved on pretty standard they exchanged off the the knight and these guys really knew their systems so uh they went into a beautiful end game they remember he could have taken but he, went, he goes for another main line more of so everything remains pretty standard the castle's queen side and this game this game was a nice one as uh, this gm had to save the king side so this game we see some exchanges it was more of a, an end game so then comes the tactic when this guy after feeling some pressure to retreat uh to to come up uh, bring up the knight fell into some tactic when he lost a pawn uh deflecting the king from the from the from the from the center and then he he brings out then we see this uh, after winning a pawn i think this became quite uh uh a disturbing game for for black so white exchanges off the rooks uh and then goes into a beautiful end game of some strong maneuvers when the king uh when the bishop leaves and then this guy we see this guy having this uh strike in the center and then this pawn by now we can see that uh black black fell prey over over vanifria endgame when uh things were really working against him and soon of course he resigned at this point having seen that white was winning with a huge advantage of course these are these are grandmasters and there was some need for endgame mastery and technique okay see you in the next lecture and have a good one bye